Well, hello everybody. It's Danny and Wanda back from Deep South Homestead. We haven't shown you the greenhouses in quite a while, mainly because we've been so busy over at Pecan Grove. We haven't really done a lot in them, but we do have a few things going on. We do have the white seedless grapes growing here. You can see them. They are hanging all over this. I extended this trellis up across the whole barn because I want to just have, I mean, whole barn. This is a high tunnel. I'm so used to being in a barn. Uh, this high tunnel to uh, keep the seedless grapes in here because they cross pollinate with the wild ones outdoors and they get seeds in them. So what we have here is I have a little homemade electroculture antenna I've put here next to this one. I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing on it. It's, uh, you know, it's the grapes are growing really well. They're hanging just in some good little tags through here. I mean, you look at that. That's a nice little... The cold kind of got them, so they're not as full as they were last yeah, year. Yeah, they went through the freeze. These things actually bloomed during the freezes we had. Yes. And it killed back some of the leaves that was on it and stuff. I just hadn't come through here and pulled them off. But um, but so far, I can't complain. It's, uh, it's doing fairly well. You know, and down here... We have our tubs of sweet potatoes. Now, this is the Evangeline sweet potato. We call it our Mr. Owl sweet potatoes because that's where it come from. And this one here was just some sweet potatoes. We had a cabbage in these pots here. And these are just some that came up from last year. And we got this Malabar spinach. You can't stop this stuff. It just comes up in these pots. It gets all up over everything in here. And the seeds fall everywhere. And... It ends up just coming up everywhere. So we'll be pulling up some of these evangelines in a few minutes uh, to take to the front garden because we're in kind of a rainy spell right now. And we like to get them out while it's rainy in the garden. Now this is, uh, guys, believe it or not, this is lettuce. This is romaine lettuce. And it's up here, it's way above, it's up to the top of my head from these tubs. It's going to seed. And I usually will let that happen every year because romaine is an heirloom and it will come back true to itself. And we'll let them go to seed and we'll harvest the seeds off of them for next year. And then we'll take everything on it and go feed it to the rabbits. And the rabbits love the romaine lettuce. This is another white seedless grape that I planted here. I planted this back in, I believe it was March, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, when we got this. And these are from Walmart, believe it or not. That's where the other seedless grape come from was Walmart. And I was in there. There are very few rare times I go. I picked one up. And we actually did the electroculture by it on the south side of the plant. Now, that's Mr. Now, Mickey's. This is Mr. Mickey's here. Now, this ain't mine. This is Mr. Mickey's. And look at this one, how it's done, took off. It's done way up yonder, growing up there like a weed. And I treat all my plants in here the same. Everything gets fertilized the same, exact same ways. And then we have one down here. This one doesn't have any electroculture around it. And it was bought and planted the same, same time as the last Same exact day. Here's a bag still laying here. Uh, the leaves on this one are looking a little bit uh, maybe like they're phosphorus deficient. Uh, the variegated veins in it, you know, looking like that. But see, it's only like right here. It's just, it's just struggling to get up. Uh, and the other one literally has done grown up into the top and is running up there so i believe and everything gets fertilized the same so nothing is any different in any of the tubs everything is exactly identical so i'm really believing that the electroculture is helping out in that one now these are the cavanaugh cavendish ba cavendish bananas uh, they are starting to grow a little bit, and I haven't had time to actually get them out of the pots and plant have them one over there too. like I need to, but we've got several of them coming up in the pots. I need to get them out of these pots and get them transplanted. Uh, last year, we had some bananas that never made it because the cold got them, but if I could get some of these out of pot and just have one main tree in it, I believe we might be able to pull this off. Now, another thing, I, this is the miracle kicker here for us. This is our... I don't know. I guess you call it, this is the seal, the thing that seals the deal. These strawberries have been in here now about three years. Um, 
We try to harvest strawberries off of them, but we never really are able to because the slugs always eat them. And Ms. Wanda got the bright idea. She said, okay, copper's supposed to control slugs. So she took one of Mr. Mickey's little electroculture antennas and brought it out here and put it out here. And for the first time in forever. Now it is growing a little weird. But... Well, yeah, that's because of the temperature fluctuations yeah. I believe we're having. But we're actually having strawberries here that nothing is eating. And they're actually, look at how many of them's coming on. And I ate I mean, uh, strawberries for a week now. I've been eating strawberries in here that the slugs have not messed with in this area right here. Right. Um, so I think it would make a big difference because I know copper pennies work. Yeah, copper, copper and doesn't work on slugs. I know beer's yeah. supposed to work. Yep. But I thought, oh. I'm going to buy some more... Um, Mr. Mickey's little antennas. Yeah, we're going to order some more of them and see if we can't put them throughout the whole strawberry bed. And if it keeps the slugs from eating our strawberries, then when we make our new bed, we will have these in it all over the place. Because strawberries is one thing we struggle with here because of slugs. Um, getting in them and eating up everything. And that would be uh, that would be a tremendous benefit for us. If that, even if, if that's all we got out of it, that would be wonderful. Here is our second year fooled you jalapeno pepper that's not hot. And normally we never get these jalapenos uh, fooled you by this time of the year. But you can see this was a this was a plant that was here last year. I I come in and clipped it all off. I mean it was a big beautiful plant last year. We got tons of peppers off of it. We didn't clip it till way right. in the winter. Yeah, it was right before the actual first cold freeze weather started you know getting here but uh as an experiment i put another one of mr mickey's electrocultures over here right there and i have one here that i was just experimenting with i did a double antenna one there but this thing uh i don't really do anything to it i just come in here and we water it occasionally but other than that it's already i mean you see me standing here in this pot it's already back this high again and right. we've done harvested peppers, yes, and it's loaded in, with peppers. We use them in cornbread and stuff like that because it's not hot, but it has the jalapeno taste to it. That's what we're after is the jalapeno taste without the heat. Okay, we've moved over to Miss Wanda's high tunnel now. And this is a cucumber she planted here. There's like three plants here, I believe. And she planted it way too early. I tried to, you know, tried to tell her, but it was back way back when it was so cold. She was in here with pots and cups covering it up and all that kind of stuff. And finally, it has struggled and struggled. And we finally put the little antennas down there for Mr. Mickey. And now we have cucumbers. I yeah. harvested eight yesterday. Oh, and then wow. there's still a bunch here. There's still... The biggest issue we were facing was it was so cold, we was having to leave the high tunnels closed up and we didn't have any pollinators. Um, and that was the biggest issue. And we didn't have time to, uh, to actually come in and do any pollinating or anything like that because we were so busy going back and forth to pecan grove over there getting work done over there that it didn't lots of them didn't get pollinated but now that it's warming up a little bit during the day we open the doors and the pollinators come in and we're starting to get cucumbers now now i know about the ones that don't require pollination and all that kind of stuff i we, tried those last year we tried them the divas or something like that they didn't do was. nothing they did not do nothing so we went back to the old fashioned. Was this the uh, is this a straight eight or national pickling? National pickling. Okay, went back to just the old tried and true varieties, and Ms. Wanda's been getting pickles to eat now. Yeah, and she's got her. Uh, is this the uh, bush okra? Bush okra planted way too early, but it's warming up a little bit now. It's starting to grow some. It's doing good. It's looking good now. I know she's been picking snap beans because I've been eating them. Yeah, well, these over here and those on the back side. I've got bush, yellow Cherokee, yellow wax beans I'll on the, the back. Big, the yellow beans hanging right under. And yonder. then we have the. These are the pole beans, the Cherokee yellow pole beans. Are these are these Cherokee yellow pole? Both beans? of them. Okay, I didn't are, know they made a Cherokee pole bean. I think so. I think both of them were called that. Okay. Okay. This is a little it's pepper. A, it's uh, called a. The lady called it her. 
crazy pepper because it makes sweet peppers. Um, that looks like a cayenne? Yeah, they're a little tiny. And it was about this tall. Yeah, it, didn't, it wouldn't even come up out of this cup for so long because insects kept eating it off and eating it off and eating it off. Yeah. And uh, so I put Mr. Mickey's rod in here. And the thing shot up in two weeks. I took off the old bad leaves that the, all the um, bugs kept eating. It's very healthy. I had three or four others here, and the bugs eat every one of them. And so I put that electroculture here and put this around it, and it's growing. Well, it looks really nice. Okay, guys, these are the uh, beefsteak tomatoes. They've been here... Goodness gracious, is it last fall we put these in here? Yes. So these have been here since last fall. We have eaten, I don't know how many tomatoes off of them, just piles of fresh tomatoes. Matter of fact, there's probably 10 in the house right now. And they're and just they're, hanging. They're just still just hanging everywhere with uh, with the white tomatoes. And this is what we have to watch out for. See this here? Yep. This is what we look out for. Now they haven't actually done any damage to the tomatoes, but you come out here and you'll find these things on the plants out here now it's getting to be warm and that's what you go through when the heat starts coming on in the south now and, and the white flies and the white and... flies will start so we feel like since these has been here since last fall that's a lot longer than we ever keep any tomato plants usually they have run their course we're going to come in here and we're going to heavily prune them and then we're going to give them a chance to kind of like come back. And if they don't really do it like we want to, we're just going to take them all out. We'll take the green tomatoes and put them up and let them ripen, you know, slowly. Uh, but that's where we're at with these tomatoes. I mean, I'm... We've got some that are really doing, looking really, really yeah, I mean, good. Yeah, some that looks coming. real pretty right here. So we may take these suckers off like Danny did and put them in some soil. Yeah. And then take all the rest of the older stuff out because... It was hard to prune all under them really well because yeah. we, they've been here for since. Well, it's just I the mean, last fall. And they have done really well. Can't complain. They survived the hard freezes this winter for the deep south. And make, um, they've been making tomatoes, and we've, we've yeah, been eating. So Lots of tomatoes here, and these will eventually turn red if we just, you know. Yeah, I'm going to give them a couple of days. Down here, this end is really kicking it. It's really looking good. Yeah. You know, they're beautiful. So we'll probably, uh, you know, This like said, end has been, I've pruned more yeah, heavily. Yeah, I was going to say, this one looks like you done pruned a lot of it off. So that's probably what we will do. Some of these, they're just getting old. They're falling down, you know, breaking and falling on the ground down here and all. We'll just, like we said, we're going to prune them kind of heavy. And if it looks like it's not going to work, we'll just get the suckers off of them, repot them, and go again. This is a good eating size. Just so the plant don't know that it's... Uh, and one down here. Yep, one right here. Be easy with it, not damage it. Okay, guys, we, uh... <laughs> there's one to pick snap beans this morning, but we found a few more in here to add to the ones she's done picked. We've got a couple of cucumbers here uh, for the salad and stuff like that. So, yeah, we just wanted to take you along and just show you where we're at. Um, the, it's getting to be that time of the year we're fixing to come through and it's basically mine we're fixing to revamp the whole thing come back in and plant a lot more stuff in it uh, Miss Wanda's a little bit more diligent with hers I've been staying over at Pecan Grove every day most all day working over there taking care of fencing and infrastructure and stuff like that so we just wanted to show you you know electroculture in the high tunnels does work uh, just like it does out in the fields. We're able to uh, keep a steady supply of daily food from our high tunnels. That's another thing because Miss Wanda's up been eating lettuce now for months off of the butter crunch and the romaine. As a matter of fact, the only reason the romaine went to seed, she didn't keep up with it. It, she, it made more lettuce than she'd eat. You know, she's got a good bit going on in here. She comes in here and keeps the snap beans kind of growing in. We call them snap beans, yellow wax beans, green beans, whatever you want to call them. 
Uh, she keeps that kind of stuff going in here. And the tomatoes, like we said, have been going since last fall. And, you know, if you're interested in something like this, now they don't have to be this size. Grower Solutions is where these come from. They've got a lot smaller ones if you don't have much room and you need to do something on a smaller scale. And, uh, yeah, we got a hummingbird up in here. He's done, <laughs> found his way in here. So, uh, that's not uncommon. That happens quite often. Birds, hummingbirds, all kinds of bumblebees and honeybees, all that stuff ends up in here. But today, guys, we just want to take you along on a little bit of our journey in the high tunnels and show you that it is possible to raise your own food year round in the high tunnels. If, like I said, if you're interested in one of these, there'll be a link in the description down below. Go check out Grower Solutions. They don't only sell high tunnels. I mean, they have all types of irrigation systems. I mean, they've got whole new lines of products. So the ground cover right here that we have in the bottom of these, if you need that in your garden to keep out weeds, you know, different things like that, go check them out. Uh, there, there's a promo code. Get you a discount. We got it set up where you get a discount from them. And get yourself set up to grow some food, guys. It's fixing to, it's not fixing to, it's already crazy out there. I mean, Wanda, I got to tell you this. We, we talked to somebody this week that said they spend $250 a week on groceries. Wanda and I can't fathom that because we raise most of what we eat. And I just... It blows my mind when somebody says they spend $250 a week. That's $1,000 a month. That used to be our salary for a month. And now people spend that just for two people, just on groceries. I don't understand. I mean, maybe I'm too old school. I don't know. But I don't understand how the world functions like that now. So uh, that's why we grow our own food. Plus, this is this right here, <laughs> this is real. Stuff you get in a grocery store has had radiation run through it. Has no living enzymes on it. It'll, you know, it probably won't even rot. Uh, has nothing in it that's beneficial to you. So we try to grow our own so we have some beneficial enzymes we can put back into our bodies. Keep that in mind when you go to thinking about what you're getting in a grocery store. It's worth it. Mine has containers. She's in raised beds. These are 10 inch raised beds. If you ask, two foot wide, 10 inches deep. It's really simple, guys. It don't take a lot to do this. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.